Good evening, everyone. My name is Megan. And as most of you know, I am Michael Belair's wonderful fiance. And today I am going to talk about a challenge that we are going to start going through that we started tonight. It's called The Love Dare. Have any of you guys ever heard of the movie Fireproof? Well, that is what the Love Dare originally is based on. So, I'm going to read the entire chapter of Love is Patient the first day again. And so, this is to get a better understanding if there are any couples out there who are either engaged or dating or questioning on why they're dating, this challenge is for you. Love works. It is life's purest and most powerful motivator and has far greater depth and meaning than most people realize. It gives courage to a coward, wisdom to a fool. It always does what is best for others and can empower us to face the greatest of problems. Love can motivate a man to put away childish things, provide for his family, and take passionate stands for what he believes in like crossing an ocean to fight for his country. Love can drive a woman to connect emotionally in relationships, comforting the hurt around her, protect her children, and extend her hand in kindness to those in need. We are born, born with a lifelong thirst for love. Our hearts desperately need it, our like our lungs need oxygen. Love changes our motivation for living. Relationships become meaningful with it. No marriage is successful without it. Love is built on two pillars that best define what it is. Those two pillars are patience and kindness. <clears throat> Excuse me. All other characteristics of loves are extensions of these two attributes. That's where your love, that's where your dare will begin. With patience. Love inspires you to become a patient person. When you choose to be patient, you respond in a positive way to a negative situation. You are slow to anger. You choose to have a lifelong you choose to have a long fuse instead of instead of a quick temper. Rather than being restless and demanding, love helps you settle down and begin extending mercy to those around you. No one likes to be around impatient people. Impatience overreacts in anger, foolish, regrettable ways. But the irony of anger toward a wrong is that it spawns new wrongs of its own. Anger almost never makes things better. In fact, it usually generates additional problems. It will trample on long-term relationships while reacting to short-term mishaps. But patience stops problems in their tracks. More than biting your lip, more than clasping a hand over your mouth, patience takes a needed, needed deep breath. It clears that air. air. It stops foolishness from whooping its scorpion tail all over the room, which meaning it stops its sting. Patience is a choice to control your emotions rather than allowing your emotions to control you. And it shows discretion instead of returning evil for evil, it brings an eternal calm to an external storm. If your spouse offends you, do you quickly retaliate or do you stay under control? Do you find that anger is your emotional default when treated unfairly? If so, you are spreading poison rather than medicine. If you were to take off his mask, you see the anger is often an emotional reaction flowing out of our own ignorance, foolishness, or selfishness. Patience, however, makes us wise. It says, help me understand, instead of, how dare you? It doesn't rush to judgment, but puts our feelings on pause so that we can fully listen to what the other person is saying. It stands in the doorway where anger is clawing to burst in awaits to see the whole picture before determining its best response. The Bible says, 
He who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is quick-tempered exaliates folly. Proverbs 14.29 As sure as a lack of patience will return will turn your home into a war zone. The patient, the process of patience will foster peace and quiet. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but the slow to anger calms a dispute. Proverbs 15, 18. Statements like these from the Bible, Book of Proverbs, are clear principles with timeless relevance. Patience is where love meets wisdom. And every marriage needs that combination to stay healthy. Love gives you permission to be human. It understands that everyone fails daily. So when they make a mistake, it patiently chooses to give them more time than they deserve to correct it. Patience gives you the amazing ability to hold on during the tough times in your relationship rather than bailing out under the pressure. So test yourself. How long is your fuse? How quickly do you adopt a bad attitude? Are you willing to wait with a smile? Can your spouse count on having a patient wife or a husband to deal with? Can she know that locking her keys in the car will be met by your calm understanding rather than a demeaning lecture that makes her feel childish? Can you know that being found watching a football game won't automatically invite a loud-mouthed laundry list of better ways he should be spending his time? What the tone and volume of your home be like? What would the volume of your tone and volume of your home be like if you tried this biblical approach? See that no one repays another evil for evil. But always seek after which is good for one another. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 Few of us do patience very well, and none of us do it naturally. But wise men and women will pursue it as an essential ingredient to their marriage relationships. It's a good starting point to demonstrate love, demonstrate true love. This love dare is a process, and the first thing you must resolve to do is to demonstrate patience on a daily basis. Think of it as a marathon, not a sprint. But it's a race worth running. Since we should never stop loving, we should never stop showing patience. It should be refreshed and supply every morning as the sun rises. And as you can see through this, if you ever get a copy of The Love Dare, it has spaces where you can journal it. But in this case, me and Michael are choosing not to write in this book. We're choosing to actually write our answers in our own, in a very separate journal. So, The Love Dare is a spiritual journey that me and Michael are going through. And this is in the journey where you can just start one day and then not continue. This journey you have to continue on. Now the journey is 40 40 days long. The journey is 40 days. And it can go beyond the 40 days. But since this is a new challenge to me and Michael, we are starting with only 40 days. And you can be surprised how much in that 40 days, so much can change. And when I started reading this, he started feeling more emotions that he never thought he'd have. Let alone, I never thought I would have that much emotion either. but But part of me knew it and felt it, but we just never acted upon it during those years. So, for all of those out there, if you're single, or if you're in a dating relationship, or not sure on what where your relationship is going, the love dare is for you. You have to be able to go through this challenge. If you don't go through the challenge, or if you can't understand it, then you, then whatever your relationship status, if you are together, 
you guys may find yourself not being ready for marriage. And that's the most vital important thing of this love there. It will open your eyes and show you if you are truly ready. And it's not just the way of we love for one another, but it's for the way that God intended us for us to love. And I know that God intends me to love Michael for the way he is unconditionally, just as Michael loves me for the way I am in unconditional love. And once you are ready to take that step, you won't just be entering a marriage. You would only you would also be entering a covenant of God. And once you enter the covenant, that means you are choosing to lay down your life for your partner. In the movie Fireproof, Caleb Holt, who is a firefighter, puts fires out everywhere he goes, but yet he can't put the fires out in his own marriage. And that is until... His dad sends him the love there. And he starts to study it. And the more he learns, the more he is trying to win his wife back before they head down the road of divorce. And that is where he realizes that not only you are entering a lifelong commitment, but you are also entering a covenant of God once you put on that ring. Once you put on the ring, say your vows and then say I do. Not only you're making a lifelong commitment to love, you're making a covenant commitment to God. And God loves us even when we don't deserve it. So I wanted to thank you for taking the time to listen to this video and for the love there. If you guys like it, comment, like, and subscribe and tell me what you think about it. If you guys love it, I'll continue to do more in the series of Megan Reviews the Love Dare. And there will be in some and in some videos, if you like it enough, that I'll bring Michael along. So until then. Love you all, and remember, God loves us unconditionally, even when we don't deserve it. I love you all, and hope to see you guys again in the next video.